Hi there, this is Architect David. Welcome to Arkida, where you can learn anything and everything about construction. For this series, although it says conventional and non-conventional, we will be discussing about the non-conventional energy sources. Now, one of the most basic non-conventional energy is called geothermal. Geothermal energy is the heat from the earth. It is the thermal energy contained in the rock and fluid that fills the fractures and pores within the rock in the earth's crust. Calculations show that the earth, originating from a completely molten state, would have cooled and become completely solid many thousands of years ago without an energy input in addition to that of the sun. It is believed that the ultimate source of geothermal energy is radioactive decay occurring deep within the earth. To get this energy, water escapes through the rocks in the earth under high pressure. The water gains heat energy as it passes through the hot areas. The water released is hot enough to serve various purposes in the homes and manufacturing companies. One variation of a geothermal plant is called the dry steam power plant. This taps the actual steam from underground, which in turn runs the turbine and it runs the generator giving out electricity. Another variation of a geothermal plant, which is the most common, is called the flash steam power plant, meaning to say this gets the water from underground and as it goes up, it becomes steam. Then that is used to turn your turbine, in which in turn turns the generator. The last variation of a geothermal is called the binary cycle power plant. This taps the hot water and in turn it will still boil that hot water to provide the steam for the turbine. Now the next variation of a non-conventional energy source is called the biomass system. This biomass is using the energy generated or produced by living or once living organisms, meaning to say it is stuck in a certain silo wherein the gas that is produced there will be used to run the boiler system for you to be able to come up with steam. Now looking at the picture below, you will see that there is a hopper. That is where you will collect all your biomass into that area. From there it will now be transported into the gasifier wherein it will tap the gases that are being emitted by your biomass. Then it goes to a gas reformulator, gas cooler, flare system, then the actual gas engine where it will start to uh, be connected to a generator. The next non-conventional energy is hydrogen. Hydrogen is the simplest element. An atom of hydrogen consists of only one proton and one electron. It's also the most plentiful element in the universe despite its simplicity and abundance. Hydrogen doesn't occur naturally as a gas on Earth. It's always combined with other elements. Water, for example, is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is an energy carrier and can be produced from a wide variety of sources. Hydrogen from renewables can be produced through various pathways with the most established being the use of renewable electricity to split water into hydrogen and oxygen in an electrolyzer.
as of this writing, there's still no pure hydrogen power plants. It's still being combined with existing power plants, which is now called CCPP or Combined Cycle Power Plants. But to make this work, large tanks of liquid hydrogen will feed into thousands of hydrogen fuel cells. These fuel cells are solid structures containing an electrolyte fluid and two terminals, much like batteries. The reactants flow into the cells, in this case hydrogen and oxygen. They intermingle with the electrolyte to produce an electrical charge and water as a byproduct. The water flows out another port while the electricity is siphoned off the terminals and held in gigantic multi-ton batteries. The electricity resides in the batteries until it is needed, in which case it is sent out through the local power grid just like any other type of power plant. In theory, this could be a near-perfect source of energy as it has no dangerous byproducts and it is just as fuel efficient as the average internal combustion engine. Now, one element that we could look at is called deuterium or heavy water. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. Heavy water, also called deuterium oxide, is composed of two deuterium atoms and an oxygen atom. In ordinary water, each hydrogen atom has just a single proton in its nucleus. In heavy water, each hydrogen atom is indeed heavier with a neutron as well as a proton in its nucleus. This isotope of hydrogen is called deuterium. And heavy water's more scientific name is deuterium oxide, abbreviated as D20. When burned, unlike fossil fuels, the gas only releases water vapor to the atmosphere. Therefore, environmentally, it is one of the best, if not the best, energy source on the planet. This could fuel power plants, steel mills, and many other industries requiring a clean and highly efficient energy source. The Philippines was identified by some of the scientific community to hold the greatest amount of deuterium deposits in the world, somewhere in the area called the Philippine Trench or Mindanao Deep, the part of the Ocean Pacific running mostly the entire length of the country. Deuterium is most prevalent in an area more widely known as the Philippine Deep, which is located along the eastern side of the Philippines, of which the deepest deuterium deposits, when viewed from a satellite, lies closest to the shores of Surigao Island. The next non-conventional energy we will be talking about is about radiant energy. You may think that we will be talking about solar panels. I'm sorry, but no. Yes, solar panels is still part of radiant energy, but they will only collect the heat and the light from the sun. Meaning to say, when we talk about radiant energy, we are collecting everything that the sun is throwing at us, including the full electromagnetic spectrum. Now you may ask, in the mornings when the sun is shining, we get solar radiation. But what about at night time? At night time, we have the stars, which are also suns in their own respective galaxies throwing out solar radiation to the Earth. So, the incoming solar radiation is studied at 340 watts per square meter wherein 48% is absorbed by the surface, 23% is absorbed by the atmosphere, and 29% is reflected. So if you were to look at this, let's say 100% incoming solar radiation, 40% again is absorbed by the ocean and land, 30% is scattered to space, reflected by the clouds and reflected by the surface, while 23% is absorbed by air, water, ozone, clouds, and dust. Now, to give you an idea of how much electricity are we getting from solar radiation, the incoming solar radiation is giving out 174 petawatts. To give it a more graspable understanding of the mammoth amount of electricity that the sun produces, let us break it down into the various magnitudes of scale. 1 petawatt is equal to 1,000 terawatts. 1 terawatt is equal to 1,000 gigawatts. 1 gigawatt is 1,000 megawatt. 
1 megawatt is 1000 kilowatts and 1 kilowatt is 1000 watts. Therefore, a petawatt can be defined as 1 billion million watts. Now, who discovered radiant energy? It is this inventor, Nikola Tesla. Aside from the AC or the alternating current, shown on the left is his patent for radiant energy wherein he needs an insulated shiny metal plate, an oscillator, transformer, and a high-quality capacitor. As you can see, it is a very simple electronic or electrical diagram. So, one inventor tried to follow it by using by installing an aluminum metal plate under his roof with a terminal and as you can see in the picture below it is being tied it is not being bolted to a certain anchoring meaning to say that is to prevent the galvanic effect of the radiant energy being collected Another of the inventors of radiant energy is Thomas Henry Moray. His version is placing a 17 meter long wiring at 2.5 meter high over two poles and collecting the radiant energy on that wiring alone. To end this lecture, let me quote Thomas Henry Moray wherein he said, Enough energy is coming to Earth to light over 1,693,600 watt lamps for every human being on the Earth today. Research the internet and YouTube to find out more about how radiant energy is being installed in present day. I hope you guys learned something new today. Watch out for my next video. Click the subscribe button to discover all the other videos in this site. Click the notification bell to be notified about new videos that we post. Press the like button to share this video to your friends. If you have additional comments, please post them down below or at our Arkida Facebook page and I will answer all your queries. Thank you.